So I just picked up the next project. Um, was looking for a zero tone mower, and uh, as usual, I was a cheapskate and went and got and buy one. Uh, found someone with a couple old ones that they got fed up with and uh, got new, uh, and just stuck these out in the back 40 uh, while still running this this one here in the screen. Uh, they found a parts machine that they picked up for a couple hundred bucks uh, just for the spare parts. So I ended up getting both machines um, and they just got dropped off. Um, and I actually started to pressure wash the machine I'm going to put back together and get running. Um, so not quite in the condition as received, but uh, you can kind of see um, how it looked when I, when I got it here. So, in the upcoming video, we are going to clean this thing up, and I am going to um, get this thing running and mowing again. So, stick around, uh, and we'll see what it takes. Yeah, so now I have this uh, Swisher zero turn mower that was given to me uh, here in the garage. Got it, got it, uh, got it pressure washed yesterday. Uh, back on it today. It cleaned up decently. Um, so now I'm gonna start going through this thing and getting it uh, worthy for some yard work. All right, so I've got a spare battery here. It should last me a good while. Um, and just some jumper cables. I got them running down to the dead battery on the mower. And I'm going to make my connections here with these jumpers. And I'll probably hop, hop up into the, uh, the seat just in case that, that, uh, that seat sensor uh, inhibits the starter circuit. So let's see what we got here. Uh, all right, that should be on. We got nothing. I'm gonna check, make sure my jumper cables here are making good contact. Let's see here. I'm gonna have the key. Yeah, uh, the key is on. I'm not getting any kind of arcing at the battery, which that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not, uh, don't have any systems on on the mower, but I'm not even getting a solenoid click. Sometimes these keys can get corrosion in them and you kind of got to play with them to get the contacts to kind of clean themselves off. Still nothing. So, where I'm going to start is at the solenoid, uh, and that's what jumps power from the battery down below to the starter motor, which is right here. We got a battery positive lug on the side of the starter. It traces back to this post on the solenoid, and then this other post on the solenoid goes down to the battery. This solenoid is controlled by the key. When we turn the key to crank, this solenoid should connect this post to this post and jump battery power coming up this wire over to the wire connected to the starter. All right, so I got I got my uh, positive lead on the multimeter in that connector. Uh, one thing to note, um, I've got that multimeter probe down beside that connector, in in the insulation's kind of holding it. If you shove that multimeter lead down in the connector itself, you could actually cause a problem. You'd make a loose connection because you would spread uh, the female pin in this connector, and then it would have a loose uh, connection once you connected it back to the solenoid. So I'm kind of using the insulation around that connector to hold my multimeter lead. So we're going to watch that multimeter, and I'm going to go over here to the key. Oh, that's kind of not expected there. Uh, I turned the key to, to on and it's showing 6 volts. I'm going to go ahead and check 
while cranking. I wasn't expecting to see 6 volts there with the key just on, so that kind of uh, might come in handy in diagnosis later. Let's crank it, turn it to start. We're getting 11.3 volts. And if you recall, um, earlier we were getting... Um, we were getting nothing from the solenoid. So that's kind of leading me to believe that the solenoid may be our issue. But I'm still kind of concerned about that 6 volts I saw with the key just on. So I'm going to try to crank it again. Still nothing. And I know I'm getting a 12 volt signal to that solenoid. So is the solenoid the issue? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check on this terminal. Um, well, I'm not hearing the solenoid click. So I know there's something up with the solenoid. Because um, I was getting 12 volts on the signal. Uh, it's case grounded. Everything looks good. There's no corrosion. So I'm betting there's something up with the solenoid. All that solenoid is is a magnetic switch. Um, so there's a uh, electromagnet inside of here. When that electromagnet is energized by this green wire, that electromagnet pulls a iron core uh, up inside this solenoid and connects these two poles. That's all it does. I'm going to verify that this solenoid uh, is or isn't good really quick. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a jumper wire and I'm going to jump power directly from the battery to the control pin on the solenoid. If I jump direct power um, to the pin on the solenoid, to the control pin on the solenoid, if the solenoid's good, it should crank the engine. If the solenoid's bad, we'll know it because uh, I'm gonna jump direct power to that. So it should activate that solenoid. If it doesn't, it's the solenoid. If it does, I know we need to go into that panel because something's up. So I'm going to grab a jumper wire and bring you guys back and we'll uh, test that solenoid once and for all together. All right, I've got a jumper wire here and I am going to go with clamping to my janky um, jumper cable here. I know I have power there. Uh, just to verify that I have power there, uh, I'm going to check it with my meter right quick. Where's my meter lead? Here it is. Um, let's see if I can get it in the frame here. And so when I touch this, should have 12 volts on it. It does. So I should be able to, if that solenoid down there is good, I can go to the control pin on the solenoid with this. And if the solenoid is good, it should crank the engine. So, or it should at least click the solenoid. So I'm going to go down here. And try to get you guys in there where you can see it. The solenoid is clicking. Oh. It looks like the solenoid's good. Yeah. So that solenoid is good. So where's where are we going next? We're going inside that panel because there is something up at that key. So I've got this panel open. Um First thing I'm going to do is just check my signal wire. Uh, I'm going to get out the multimeter and turn that guy on and switch it over to voltage so we can check, make sure we're getting power up to the key. Let's see here. I'm going to, I've got me a ground clipped here, so I'm going to get a ground and I know my red wire on the key is uh is power so let's see if we can't uh, it should be that guy we have power at the key but still nothing so i'm kind of thinking it might be an open in the green wire going down to the solenoid so I am just going to really quickly use my jumper wire 
and see if we can't overlay this this green wire here to the solenoid and if if it cranks I'm gonna go to the solenoid with this jumper so I've basically taken that green wire out of the equation so if it works now I know I've got an open in that green wire and the key is fine yep still got a sticky solenoid it sounds like oh no I just have to hold the key for a second for it to crank all right so now just for the sake of moving forward with this thing and seeing if we can get the engine to run and, and uh, everything we're going to just leave my jumper wire uh, connected to the pin on the ignition switch where the green wire is connected and we're gonna jump it over to that solenoid so I just unplugged the green wire at the solenoid and replaced it with my jumper wire so uh, my jumper wire is now the green wire and later on once I make sure that the engines all good and uh, the rest of the machine is all good um, I'll come back and I'll just I'll probably just leave that green wire in there and disconnect it on both ends and overlay a new wire so I'm gonna go ahead and assume we're gonna have to get all these covers off all this plastic up here so we can get to the carburetor you can see the bowl of the carburetor down here it's all gunked up um, so gonna pull all the plastics off get that carburetor out of there uh, get it disassembled and soaking and more than likely we have old fuel to deal with it's got two tanks one on each side and yep you can see your reflection down in there looks like um, and it looks like about a quarter tank to me on both sides uh, the fuel doesn't look absolutely terrible I've seen worse but it is definitely varnished you can smell it if you guys could only smell through the camera here you would definitely agree that we've got to get this old fuel out of here so I'm probably just gonna pull off the fuel lines from the bottom of the tanks and let those drain out we'll put some fresh fuel in there but first I'm gonna pull all this apart get that carburetor out of there clean it up and get that reinstalled and then uh, worry about getting the fuel tanks going uh, making sure this fuel pump is working and see if we can't get this thing to fire up alright I got these screws out if I can help it I'm gonna leave them in this little shroud now will this come off it will oh wow yeah I am glad we're having to go in there um, if this thing would have ran perfect without cleaning the carb, I would have never pulled it apart to find all this junk. So that's all going to have to be cleaned out. I can hit that guy with a pressure washer. Uh, this, uh, on the other hand, I don't want to hit with a pressure washer. I might cause more problems than I'm already dealing with. So, let's see here. Yeah, that's one of those two barrel little carburetors and I was right I do have to pull the intake manifold and just pull the carb with the intake manifold alright let's uh let's get out the shop back here and get some of this crud uh, cleaned up so I can pull that carburetor off let's see here I'm really getting better at doing things with one hand all right, noise alert. All right, I got a lot of that crud off. All the big stuff anyway. Uh, knock some of it loose with the wire brush and then uh, use the shop vac. And uh, I kind of just got all the loose stuff around this carburetor. Um, so let's see. It's got Torx bit screws in a hex head bolt. So 
Uh, it looks like though. Uh, yeah. Gonna have to use a wrench. All right. So about got this last bolt out here, and realized why they're so difficult to get out. Thread locker. All right. So this guy's loose. Oh, I missed a wire connection there. Uh, whatever that guy is. Uh, are those rivets holding that guy in? Can't tell. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can get that linkage out of the way. See if we can roll it far enough to get the linkage out of the way. Got a breather tube back here in the back. There we go. Now we're talking. Let's get that uh, that linkage out of the way. Uh, may have to put you down once more here while I get this linkage off and figure out these wires here. Let me bring you right back. Actuator there on the side that controls a linkage to the carburetor that is ran off that fuel management little box there. Um, those screws are not what detaches it. So it looks like I've got to cut these little zip ties and pull that wire out of that bundle. And then in the back of this little box, there's connectors. So I gotta get in there and uh, figure out how these plugs are retained and unplug it there and then I'll be able to completely separate this this carburetor from this machine um, so I'll bring you guys back when I've got that all sorted and we can move forward with uh, actually working on the carburetor so I actually had to open up that little box and evict a spider tending to its uh, to its babies and unplug it from there had a little tab there holding it in and there was also another wire coming out the back and plugging in outside of that little box but I was finally able to get this separated now all I've got left is the fuel line and I can get this thing on the bench alright it's finally making the voyage over to the workbench now we can actually crack into this crazy thing and uh, get all this crud off of it. Clean out the jets, make sure the float's not stuck. Alright, um, I'm just going to knock some of all this dirt and grime out of this thing before I start turning screws. There's just so much dirt. It must have been a dusty uh, property that this mower took care of. All right, so I got about five, five, ten minutes before the bread's done uh, for dinner. So I'll continue digging here. Gonna have to go out to the garden shed and get a shovel. I don't think I've ever seen a carburetor or a mower, for that, for that matter, that's had this much dirt piled up on it. side gotta watch that linkage make sure I don't damage it I think the bottom side is actually worse let's see here maybe a nylon brush will do a little bit better of a job here oh yeah that's not too bad at least for getting these big areas this brush is about worn out though, so. But, it's moving things along a little bit quicker. Oh yeah. This stuff.
stuff on the bottom here doesn't seem to be stuck on as, as much. Forgive me, you may be able to hear kids screaming in the background. Welcome to my life. I've, uh, I've got a seven-year-old boy, four-year-old little girl, and a ten-month-old little boy. Um, so, we have our hands full, especially when uh, the wife's at work. sometimes get carried away out here in the garage and when I come back uh, they've wrecked the house pretty quickly and cue the kids and the dog I'll be back all right so I got, well, decided to go ahead and uh, it's got this big intake deal on it plenum and then the actual intake back here with the carb in the middle and it's got four studs with nuts holding the the carburetor sandwich if you will together and so I'm taking these nuts off so I can split it up into three pieces and go through each one and clean them both pieces of intake um, won't be so bad to clean once they're apart I won't have to be so careful to get not get anything in the carb itself so I'm gonna isolate that carb from the intake and uh, clean up the exterior a little bit more and then crack it open. So that's the last nut holding it together. Well, this guy should come off. And it did. I'm going to set that over to the side. And it should, the carb itself should lift off now. I don't know if it's stuck on there or what. I know this linkage here. Oh, and that is the actual throttle. So the throttle is controlled by an electronic uh, uh, actuator. Uh, let's see here. How can I remove that? Looks like if I take these two screws out, I can take this whole actuator off and get this linkage out of there. I don't think there's any other way to get that out. Let's see here. It looks like they're like a six millimeter or, or maybe a quarter quarter inch wrench. Let's track us down a quarter inch wrench. Let's see if that'll do the trick. Let's see. Is it a quarter? No, it's smaller than a quarter. I actually get to use my uh, tiny wrench set. I think they're, they used to be called ignition wrenches, if I recall correctly. Um, they just came in a toolkit I got. Oh, so they're, I think that'll do the job. I think we could probably find something a little tighter than that, but it'll work. Uh, that's a 7 30 seconds. Not sure what that, yeah, that works. So we'll run those out, get that actuator off, and then that intake should separate from this carburetor sometimes it's quicker going through my wrench drawer it's got a little bit more organization not to say my socket drawer isn't organized but all the little sockets tend to just kinda float around in the uh, in the socket drawer so it takes a little more time to find those smaller sockets. My wrenches on the other hand I've got them all laid out in a little organizer tray. And these little wrenches never get used so they're always in stay in order. Alright let's see if we can get this little actuator here off. You guys gotta remember how this goes together because 
Well, it's not like I can't go back and look at my own video to remember, right? So I'm going to set this over to the side as well. And we've got background noise from the children again. Sounds like I may need to go regulate. So I will be right back, gentlemen and ladies. Alright, had to go in there and settle the uh, after, dinner, after dinner battle of who gets the last roll. It's always fun. Alright, let's see if we can get these things apart. Do I have to take those studs out too? I don't know. Looks like it should come off. Let's give it a light tap here. We'll just jar it loose if it is stuck. Hmm. I don't think it threads into this carb. Maybe it's just crud that has kind of stuck these studs into the carb. I really don't think it's threaded together. But I don't think it's separating either. Let's see. Hmm. You know what? I think it is threaded. So maybe I do have to pull these studs out. Or is there nuts under this gasket? Really don't want to tear up the gaskets because I don't have another set of gaskets for this thing. Nah. But there is um, a countersink little collar up under that gasket. And I think the only reason that would be is if it was threaded in over on this side. Yeah. There's square nuts that are molded into this plastic intake. Um that these studs are screwed into. These studs also have a head below this gasket so it's uh... the studs are holding the carb to the intake so maybe may be able to find a, a socket that fits those studs. Let's see here. It's quite small. I don't know if I'm going to have one small enough. Oh, look at that. That never happens. First shot. I need to go buy a lottery ticket. Because that never happens. Especially with small, weird fasteners like that. Oh, yeah. They popped right loose. I'm going to go ahead and break them all loose and see if this carb kind of frees up. Yep. Alright, learn something new every day. These studs are holding the carb to the intake. You would, you, I would have thought that the nuts that were on the other side would kind of hold it all together, but I was wrong. So, I kind of got to back them all off at once together here. Or they'll get in a bind. I think that one's loose. That one's loose. That one is loose. Oh, money. There we go. Alright. I'm gonna set this guy aside. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna get these studs out of there because they're underneath this gasket. I could make another gasket, but if I can save myself some time um, and leave them in there, I think that's what I'll do. But you guys can just believe me. There's a there's a um, a screw head underneath this gasket that's part of this stud, 
and it screws in on the other side so I think I'm gonna dump this shop rag here that I've been working on get rid of some of this dirt and we'll continue cleaning up this carb make sure you guys are able to see there we'll try to stay organized here makes things go a lot better if you just keep things straight and organized I'm probably just gonna pull the float ball off to start off and and uh, kind of look at the condition of that and make a decision from there whether we're gonna completely disassemble this thing I kind of suspect that things are just kind of stuck there wasn't the there was still liquid fuel in there it wasn't so old that it had solidified into some funky um, solid or anything so we may have some dirt and some debris down in there um, but for the most part I think we'll get away with just uh, bench testing this putting a positive in ground to this solenoid that's the solenoid that cuts off fuel it's got a little plunger inside there that stops fuel from flowing into the bowl from the tank when the thing's not running so want to make sure that's not stuck um, got to check the needle and seat that's on the float and make sure that's not stuck um, all carburetors have that the float needle and seat um, this solenoid uh, the fuel shutoff solenoid isn't necessarily going to be on all your small engines or machines with small engines so you just kind of got to work with what you got I'll do one little once over here and get some more heavy debris off and then we'll spray this thing down with some carb clean and open it up but it is a little uh, two barrel carb um, you know what actually which way was this thing on here it was this goes to the intake that's the back side of the carb this is the front side of the carb uh, so I guess this guy would be the choke um, actually no this linkage was going to the governor so this would be our throttle and then the choke is over on this other side and that makes a lot more sense so this this uh, actuator here is not for the throttle; it's for the choke. That makes a lot more sense. So that little that little uh, electronic box controls the choke. I guess that's why that little box says "easy starting." It uh, controls the choke for you electronically uh, during startup. Makes a lot more sense. Which I I should have uh, known that. Uh, anyway, I don't think I've ever seen a small engine carbureted that has a uh, electronic throttle. I have seen them with an electronic choke, so or an electronic electronic auto enrich, so it adds more fuel and cold start. We're gonna get all this heavy debris off of this thing and then uh, crack it open. Man, there's so much dirt. Look at that big chunk of dirt there. And there was, it doesn't look like there was any dirt daubers to bring this dirt in, so it had to get in here some other way. I, I'm not really putting together any scenario why this thing would be covered in so much dirt. It's not like it was out plowing fields or anything. It's not a, it's not a tractor. I'm really pumped with, about having this machine. Um, I'm finally joining the 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 new age, I guess. Um, I've still been mowing with a your typical lawn tractor, um, so you got to do all kinds of crazy laps and different turns and going forward and reverse and to get the whole yard. So um, I'll have more time to fill around in the garage because I'll get the yard mode quicker. 
Not to say I don't like mowing the yard. I do my best thinking on the lawn more. But I've got a lot of other stuff to do, so cutting time out of mowing will be nice. nice thing about using these uh, placemats I guess for lack of a better term uh, is that you can make a mess and then just clear, clear the area off and pick it up and dump it. Almost any parts store you go to has these on the counter. Usually if you go in there uh, they change these promotional things out all the time. So they usually have a stack of these placemat deals uh, in the back somewhere so next time you go to the parts store if this is something that uh, you think you can benefit from ask your parts guy at the local O'Reilly's or AutoZone or, or Advance Auto or wherever you go to get your uh, parts and they'll probably be happy to give you the old ones um, it's kind of nice to have these I've got a drawer full of them because after a while fluids and brake clean and and uh, stuff like that kind of eats the uh, lamination off of them. So uh, when when I've worn one out, I just swap it out for another, and they're they're free. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna kind of tidy up here, and then we'll um, crack this puppy open. There we go. She popped. Let's go ahead and pop this other one loose here. Uh, try not to use the impact driver if we don't have to. And it looks like we may have to. Alright. Let me dig out the impact driver. Don't recall what drawer it's in, so bear with me here. There we go. Those of you that aren't familiar with the impact driver, that's what they look like. This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight. Uh, essentially, it's just a, a cam mechanism. So when you strike it with a hammer, depending on what's, where you have it set, when this compresses, the tip rotates. So I have it set in the counterclockwise position. So when you hit this down, it's got like a little cam, a little ramp inside there that causes the tip to spin. So when you strike it, it uh, makes it makes the the screwdriver bit um, stay in the screw, and it puts that twisting force on it as well. Let me grab me a hammer. But you want to be kind of careful with the carburetor because it's not. Uh, the toughest thing in the world, but I think we can lightly tap this thing and get it out of there. Let's see. Can you guys see? Uh, somewhat. Just trust me when I say I'm hitting it with a hammer here. And you want to hold it, hold the grip on this thing firm. Let's see if I can get this carburetor where it's going to sit level. see if that was enough to pop it loose. It doesn't turn it much, just enough to knock it loose where you can break it free by hand. There we go. I don't even think it actually broke the, the impact driver. I don't think broke it loose. It just kind of jarred the threads and shocked the threads enough to where it would break free. So I'm going to set this, this impact driver aside now since we don't need it anymore. Now let's get the regular screwdriver here and see what this bowl looks like. Let's see. You guys still see? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna get this hammer out of the way. All right. Let's open up this bowl and see what we have in there. Crossing my fingers. 
to uh, not have a big mess inside this thing. Alright, is it going to break free without... And you may see me using a lot of tricks from a another fellow YouTuber, um, Musty1. I've learned a ton from that guy. So if you haven't checked out Musty1, uh, highly recommend it. So the one thing I did learn from Musty is uh, they'll whack it with the handle of a screwdriver trick. There we go. You hear the sound change as I was hitting it. Once it came loose, or started to come loose, you could hear the sound change when I was hitting it. Oh, I think I need to pull out that, that uh, shut-off solenoid before we uh, go any further. So I need a little wrench. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There's a there's two flat spots on the inside of that, that solenoid there where you can unscrew it from the bowl. Alright, so we have our, our uh, custom mutilated wrench here. Let's see if I can't pop that guy loose. It uh, seems to be on there pretty decently. I'm going to see if I can't set this thing up and uh, give it a little taparoo. And it's pretty st still pretty warm from the bench grinder here. Uh, let's pull that guy off and that brake clean. Probably not the smartest idea there though. Uh, cooling off a hot tool and very flammable liquid but seemed to work out that time uh, the house and garage survive another day avoiding fire don't worry though I have a uh, extinguisher on the wall that uh, you know it was last certified in 1974 so surely it's uh, still good for putting out a fire obviously I'm being sarcastic there need to get an updated fire extinguisher that was just the fire extinguisher that was in this in this house when I uh, or in this garage when I bought the property so uh, let's see here kinda hard to get any kinda grip on this thing come on looks like I'm gonna have to give it a little bit of a taparoo here you know, set it off to the onto the bench here get a solid surface to work on let's see if we can't knock that loose probably should be using the uh, device to do this maybe I can jar it loose though Doesn't seem to be working too well. Um, aha. Uh -huh. I know what I'll do. Um, I'm gonna grab some channel locks and uh, try to find a place to grip that bolt to hold it still so I can break that loose. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and move back over to the to the drain pan here. Can you still see me? Yeah, looks like I can grab it right here on the bowl. I'm not going to squeeze this thing too hard. I don't want to break the bowl. Do have uh, spare parts, but don't want to use them if I don't have to. Come on, there we go. All right, we're nearly in. Let's see if she'll unscrew now. Yeah, there we go. So, I'm expecting to see a little plunger of some sort that blocks off the fuel. I don't guess you guys can see very well when I'm uh, blocking you with my hand. There we go. Yeah, so that little plastic plunger goes down into a uh, cylinder inside uh, the bowl where the fuel from the fuel tank comes in. And when this thing's not energized, that little plunger pops out and blocks off that port coming from the fuel tank. Uh, it doesn't look like it's particularly... Uh, corroded or dirty the threads are a little dirty but that's 
just corrosion from the aluminum that it was threaded into. Uh, I'm going to set this thing aside and we'll come back and we'll shoot power and ground to it and just make sure it actuates. I'm going to set that aside for now um, and we'll go ahead and pop this ball off. If you guys aren't already familiar with the trick, I actually use um, probably the cheapest way to organize uh, parts and fasteners. Um, just a little $1 uh, cupcake pan. I got it at the dollar store or Walmart or something like that. But it works great for separating parts, uh, especially when working on a carb or something like that. I'll try to keep you guys uh, view here. Alright, we're about to finally see how bad this carburetor is. Already knocked the ball loose. Let's. There we go. Oh yeah, she's definitely got some cruddies in there. Yeah, and that little fuel shut off um, comes in through the side of this bowl, right through there, and comes in and blocks off that port. Uh, that port lines up uh, here on the carb. It looks like where the jets are. So when the thing is shut off and that solenoid is not powered, no fuel can get in here to these jets. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, squirt a little bit of brake clean in there and just flush it out. Uh, I use uh, a carburetor parts cleaner kit from Gunk is the brand I have right now. Um, any heavy debris that I can get out before I soak parts, the better. And the longer the, the parts soak that I'm using, what will last. And you can filter it out after a while and get all the debris out of it, but um, getting all the heavy debris out just kind of uh, makes it last longer before you have to go in and filter stuff out or anything like that so I'm gonna kind of slosh that around a little bit and get any loose debris out of there gonna let it dump out of that port where that solenoid was and I'm just gonna try not to get this brake clean everywhere and just kind of flush it out that can doesn't like to be held upside down Yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to get this thing cleaned up and functional. If not, we'll try our, our hand at the carburetor off the other machine. But I suspect that this uh, will clean up and do fine for us. Uh, the gasket for the bowl is stayed on the body of the carburetor there. Uh, I'm going to try to take a little pick or something and get that out without damaging it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up our parts soak here and go ahead and throw that bowl in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's kind of out of the frame, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. That's the stuff I'm using. It's just a one gallon paint can type container it's full of uh, I'm sure it's some kind of lacquer and chemical solution. I've cleaned quite a few carbs in it um, thus far. I think it's still got quite a bit of life left in it though. So while I'm taking apart the rest of this carb, I'll go ahead and throw this bowl in there and get it soaking. Um, if you can help it when you're soaking these parts, you want to make sure you don't have any um, like that, the o-ring down in there. I'm going to try to pop off that o-ring. Um, obviously the o-ring is going to be fuel resistant but um, I don't want any kind of weird chemical reactions happening and, and damaging our o-ring. Uh, the o-ring looks good. You just want to clean it off and then run your finger over it around the outside and inside edges. Make sure there's no little nicks in it. Uh, make sure the rubber is still pliable and that, that o-ring looks good so I'll reuse that. I'm just going to set that aside there and uh, have one more look at this bowl, make sure I don't have any other 
plastic parts in there or rubber parts and these little uh, parts cleaner kits usually come with a little basket and then you're taking this thing apart so the next thing I want to take off is the float it's free the floats good and free you want to check and make sure um, it isn't sticky um, one way to check um, this float is you should be able to blow air through the fuel line when the float uh, is hanging down but if you oh, there you go you know you can see uh, when that floats hanging down like that you should be able to blow through that uh, that fuel line um, when the floats up that's when it blocks off fuel from filling up the bowl uh, as the bowl fills up with fuel this float will float up and shut off fuel coming in from the fuel line so the way to test that uh, without installing it on the machine and uh, just to find out you have still have a problem uh, you can blow through the fuel line and it should be able to uh, blow through with the float hanging down like that and then you can flip the carburetor over and you shouldn't be able to blow through it when the float is all the way at the top of its travel so uh, we'll check we'll do that um, once I've taken this thing apart, cleaned it, and reassembled. Uh, but to pull this float off, this pin that acts as a hinge for this float, uh, sometimes you can just push them out by hand. Sometimes you have to use a punch and knock them out. I'm going to grab a pick so I can push it through. It seems like it's loose enough where I can do that. Let's see if I have a straight pick. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't already have a set of picks like this in your toolbox, go pick them up. This set, it's like four little picks for like a dollar or something at Harbor Freight. Sometimes they'll run the free coupons for it, but these things are invaluable when working on stuff. Uh, I'm just going to try to push this pin, this float pin, through. You want to be careful with these picks though because they will go into your finger or whatever part of your body that you decide to impale with. Let's see here. And you obviously don't want to send this pin flying across the garage. So just to kind of be careful there. There we go. I think I've got enough pushed out enough to grab it with a pair of needle nose. Uh, let's see here. And then once you get this loose, you don't want to just yank that float off because the needle for the needle and seat um, is attached to that float. The needle and seat is what stops fuel flow from the tank when the uh, when the bowl is full. All right, so I'm gonna just lift this guy up, real careful like. Oh, and the, the needle fell off. Let's see here. That's why I have this drain pan so I can retrieve things when they fall. So there's the needle. It just sits down in a uh, a bore, and this one has like a rubber material on the tip of it. So when the float floats up it pushes this needle into that bore and stops fuel flow and you just want to make sure that this is not worn at the tip um, and that it's free of debris this one looks pretty good if you guys can see that so it sits on this on the bottom side of this float let's see if the camera will focus there on this little groove right there if you see the top of this it's got that little t-shaped peg that little t-shaped peg slides into that little groove just like that so when you pull the float off if this if this little guy doesn't just fall out um, you can just grab it and slide it out of that little groove so I'm gonna leave those two put pieces apart for now um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and just drop this float in my uh, cleaning solution over here now I'm gonna raise up my little basket and let it drain out for a second um, and then throw the needle in there and let well actually for the sake of not risking losing this needle it's actually pretty darn clean um, I might wipe it off with some shop shop towel but it's actually pretty clean it, it I don't see any debris on it uh, just a little bit there that I can wipe off by hand so I'm not even gonna risk throwing that in there and having to dig around for it uh, in my carburetor soak uh, container so I'm just going to set that over there in the in the cupcake pan and keep moving forward. 
I'm going to go ahead and try to get this seal out. Sometimes the O-ring seal, you can push it together with your fingers and get it to pop up out of its groove. If you can't do that, you can, of course, uh, get down in there with a little pocket screwdriver and pop it up or, or a pick or whatever you want to use. You just want to avoid damaging that seal. There we go. And from there, I'm just going to grab it by hand and so I can feel if it's starting to get stuck I don't want to damage this thing you just going to want to lightly wiggle it and when it does get stuck just kind of wiggle up and down on the seal there we go it's loose there's quite a bit of debris in there um, the outside of this seal obviously is exposed to the outside of the carburetor and then the inside uh, obviously is exposed to fuel um, it's got some dirt and junk on it I'll probably just uh, spray that with some carb clean and wipe it off. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. And looks like sometimes you'll have a flathead cut into these uh, jets. On this machine, however, um, there's no way to remove the jets from this plastic piece here. Um, but we can remove this whole plastic piece with two screws down here at the base. So I'm going to pop those screws out, pull that off, and just look through it make sure there's no debris down in those jets and then uh, look the thing over and, and uh, see what else we need to take apart um, you kinda have to make a judgment as you go along um, uh, as, you're, as you're working on a carburetor as you, as you go you kinda see how bad it is and see how much debris is in it and kinda make an evaluation of whether or not you're gonna completely take the thing apart or try to just pull the main parts out the jets, the idle jet, the main jet, um, emulsion, emulsion tube if it has one that's removable, um, needle and seat, uh, and then clean and reassemble. Alright, so I got the float and needle back in the seat and got the bowl cleaned back up and thrown back on here. Just tightening up the screws for the for the bowl now. Um, let's see. What else do I have in the pan left? Oh, I missed a part. I need to pull this bowl back off because I left out the O-ring that we pulled out right at when we first pour, pulled this bowl off before I dropped it in the in the carb clean. I pulled out that little rubber o-ring so and it is still sitting over here in the tray so off the bowl comes again I'm gonna dump those out and that that little rubber o-ring goes right there on the center right there oh before I drop that in there I'm gonna make sure there's no dirt or anything on it looks pretty good let's drop that back in there and that's what seals um, this port for the fuel shut off to the bore here on this uh, these this plastic piece for the jets so now we're good I can drop that back on this back on I've got to make sure that this port for the fuel shut off is facing to the outside of the carburetor and so there's our fuel line so I know that's the the back side of the carburetor because the because the uh, fuel line pointed to the back so the bowl needs to go on this way let's see if I can get her on there gotta pop that o-ring that we just put in into that plastic piece put our screws back in and tighten those guys up And because there's seals that are need to be seated as I tighten this up, I'm going to jump back and forth and snug it down in little steps until it's tight. Just to make sure nothing gets uh, in there crooked or gets pinched. Because I don't want to have to pull this thing back apart. Alright, so all that's left in our tray here is the parts that hold the carved in the manifold 
and our fuel shutoff that we checked earlier that is no longer stuck so I think this was a problem the whole time guys but you never know until you get in there and start pulling things apart I'm just gonna snug that down by hand well this cylinder wants to turn on me so I am gonna grab that wrench we ground down earlier and just lightly snug that up there we go alright that's on there next we need to let's see here um, I believe this electric choke jobby there um, mounted to the intake manifold there on those two screw holes so I'm going to clean up this intake manifold and uh, then we'll get that electric choke put back on and then the carb uh, put back onto the manifold so I'm going to run in and uh, throw this in the kitchen sink and rinse it out and I'll be right back with you alright had to switch cameras on you guys there uh, got full in the memory card on the old uh, stationary camera so rather than going and dumping all that footage off my memory card I figured I'd just switch over to the other camera and continue here so uh, we left off I was about to remove this plastic assembly that holds the uh, the jets I think those are the main jets for this carb so I'm gonna pop those screws out pull that guy off and I think this is as far as I'm gonna go as far as take this assembly I'm just gonna clean up the body of the carb with the brake clean uh, and let it dry out and uh, probably go reassemble um, still got a uh, bench test that fuel shut off solenoid make sure it's all good uh, but we're well on our way here uh, not looking bad uh, there's some debris down here inside this bowl or the top of the bowl so got to take care of that let's get a screwdriver here and go ahead and pop off that those little jets Mm. Go ahead and run those all the way out now. I got them both broke loose. Alright. Let's see if we can pull that guy off. I'm gonna bring it over here and dump those little screws out and you can see light through those jets they look like they're clear let's see yeah let's look at the other side see if there's any debris down in there doesn't look like it I think I'm just gonna shoot some brake clean down through there uh, from both directions shoot it down that way and then back down through that way um, and that thing will be good to go, I believe. That's pretty interesting. You guys remember which way that went? Oh, okay. So there's two little uh, O-ring type seals at the base of these. Uh, and that looks like, let's see here. Is that the needles that control the jets? Maybe. Not really super. Oh, no. Those are emulsion tubes. So if you look, there is ports on these tubes here that also distribute fuel so those uh, I believe the jets feed fuel um, up into this little plastic housing and then the fuel is metered in through these ports on the side of these tubes that get up into the throat of the carburetor and uh, the airflow and the venturi effect pull that fuel up through those tubes and feed it into the engine so uh, I'm gonna shoot that with some brake clean um, and make sure I don't damage those little little seals let's see if we can well let's dump all that debris out there yeah, let's go ahead and hit that with the brake clean here while we're while we're fiddling around
I'm gonna set that up on the end like that. See if we can't get all that debris to run up out of there. Not too bad. Oh, still got a little bit more debris um, in that hole there. So let's flush that out. Is all that gone now? Yeah, all that debris's gone. All right. May shoot some carb clean or brake clean down through the sh thro the throats of the carb. Make sure those are all cleaned out. Let's see if I can see light through those little tubes there. Yeah, that one. I can see light through that guy. All right, focus. Let's see if I can get a straight shot through. Yeah, light through that one. The one closest to us. Yeah, it looks like all those tubes are clean. I'll probably hit those with some brake clean just to make sure there's no debris up inside those tubes. But the ports look clean, or they look clear anyway. So I think I'm just gonna um, give the whole body of the carb a bath, uh, and a once over, a wipe down, uh, and then retrieve my parts out of the carb clean, and start reassembling this thing. And then we'll we'll test our fuel shut off solenoid, and uh, we still have to clean up these manifolds. I'll probably do that off camera. Um, just gonna probably throw those in the sink and wash them out, um, dry them out, blow them out with compressed air, and uh, get this thing reassembled and see if we can't uh, get this engine to make some noise. I got those screws out of this top plate, but I'm kind of contemplating whether or not I should pull that guy off. Everything looks pretty clean. The reason I am not so sure I want to pull that off is the gasket is stuck and I don't want to damage that gasket if I have to I'll order a carb kit I don't think I'm opening that up I do not want to risk damaging that gasket in there I'm not really familiar with what's under there because I'm not familiar with this carb but the thing isn't horribly dirty so I think I'm gonna take a risk and uh, I haven't found anything horribly dirty yet, but it doesn't take much to make the thing not run. And we still have to check that fuel shut off solenoid because the symptom I was having when we did get it to start before we took this carb off kind of made me think maybe the uh, fuel shut off solenoid might have been stuck. So um, I'm probably going to go ahead and put these screws back in this plate. Uh, and go ahead and te bench test that solenoid and if the solenoid seems all right i may go ahead and try to open this up because i can make another gasket if i have to um but i'm going to go ahead and test that solenoid because the symptoms kind of match the solenoid being stuck and if indeed that solenoid is stuck i'm going to feel pretty confident with just um, reassembling from where we're at right now and seeing if the thing will run so uh, let's get set up to test that solenoid and then and see where we go from there all right so I decided uh, while I'm letting some carb parts soak and uh, whatnot to test this fuel shut off solenoid so I've got jumper leads going over to a battery that's my negative on there, and this is my positive. I don't think it's polarity sensitive, so either doesn't matter what pin it goes to. But so when I touch this guy, that little plastic plunger should move. It is not doing anything. Just to make sure it's not polarity sensitive, I'm going to swap my leads here. And I know I'm getting something. It's throwing a little spark when I hit it. I think the plunger's stuck. Yeah. It feels quite gritty. I'm gonna, there we go. Something freed up there. Let's see if that changed anything. Oh, yeah. I think that was the problem the whole time, which would explain, uh, like when we were trying to crank it with just some fresh fuel in it, 
uh, and I could tap on the this solenoid and then it would start and die. I think when I was tapping on it, it was letting that plunger uh, kick back just a little bit for a moment just to let a little bit of fuel in the bowl and it would start on that and then this would be stuck in the closed position and so it would use all the fuel that managed to get through and die. I want to work that back and forth quite a bit just to get it nice and loosened back up. I think that was the whole problem with the thing. Oh, it got stuck again. How about that? Make sure. No. Yeah, it's still getting stuck. I may throw some 3 in 1 oil on that guy and work it back and forth. Alright, so as you guys saw, that solenoid was more than likely the problem. So uh, I'm going to get all my parts out. I'm going to clean out this pan and get all the junk out of there so um, I can start assembling this thing in a clean environment. Actually, I'll probably just set this pan aside and assemble on the bench. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, pop this carburetor back on and see if uh, we can have a running lawnmower. So I'm probably going to wipe down this bench here. Make sure there's relatively clean surface to work on. Um, and we'll we'll put her back together and see how it turns out. Um, I did have a few studs fall out uh, because this gasket is kind of iffy. I may end up having to make a new gasket there um, on that side because it is kind of boogered up. But... Um, I think I'm just going to turn you guys off for a moment. Go ahead and throw this thing back together. Um, obviously, it goes back together the same way it came apart. Once I get this thing uh, all back together, I'll do another once over on the exterior and uh, clean it up the best I can. And we'll start um, reassembling it to the intake manifold and then get over to the machine and throw it back on. So, stand by, guys. Uh, and I'll bring you back when we're when we're uh, throwing this carb on the machine. And let's let's uh, throw the carburetor back on uh, this manifold. So which way did it go? The screws for the choke, I believe, were going down. So the carb needs to go on that way. And if I remember correctly, these studs held the carb onto here, and then nuts held on that upper intake piece to the carb. I may end up having to replace this gasket. I've kind of done a little bit of damage to it in the process of cleaning things. But we'll see how it does. It's just the gasket for that upper intake manifold, so I'm not terribly worried about it. We'll see how it goes. I'll uh, try this this gasket out before I spend a bunch of time making a gasket. And I'll probably look around online to see if there's a uh, cheap rebuild kit for this setup. And if so, I'll just order one, and when it comes in, I'll, I'll pull this thing back apart real quick and clean it up. And seal it back up with new with new gaskets. I'm just gonna snug these down. It is going into uh, plastic, or it's a it's a captive square nut, uh, and it's captive by the plastic of the intake. So don't want to break any of that plastic. But I'm just going in a crisscross pattern, making sure not to warp the carburetor body when I tighten this thing up, or warp the uh, the plastic manifold. Alright, before I put that outer intake manifold deal on there, I'm going to flip this guy over. Oh, you know what? It does go the other way. Because the linkage for the choke is on this side. Wait a minute. Let's let's think this through right quick here. Where is that electric? Okay, no. No, we're right. 
the linkage for that is still on this piece so it goes that way I need to hook it into this linkage here let's figure out what part of the linkage it goes in mm. okay it goes in that far hole here and then we'll get the screws guys back in there I think it was this little wrench that fit these little screws yeah another another uh, fastener you don't want to over tighten these are going straight into the plastic so want to be careful not to strip these guys out otherwise you may have some issues with that with that electronic choke you don't want any play in this assembly or it's not going to open and close that choke um, fully just a little snug there all right see all right good deal let's see so um is that right um yeah yeah everything's good all right so I don't know where that thing wants to be the the control module for this electronic choke is probably gonna cycle that choke when I turn the key on and give it power so I'm gonna go clean up this other intake guy here that guy and we'll throw it on and then throw the whole assembly back on the machine all right so I know this guy faces up this way I'll make sure that gasket's kind of in place as much as I can since I kind of damaged that gasket but like I said I don't think that gasket's gonna cause any uh, drivability issues if you want to use that terminology let's throw these nuts back on here Go ahead and get those finger tight and then throw on the other two. And the parts tray is almost empty. snug these guys up and then all we have left is the o-rings that go on the manifold Snug it up nice, nice and tight since I have a gasket that's kind of iffy. Alright, that's one assembled carburetor intake assembly. Alright, go ahead and throw in these, these O rings that seal it, seal the manifold to the cylinder heads.
啊。Alright, those are harder than they look to get in there. They've got little notches that are tighter to hold the seal in. Let's see. Get in there. There we go. Huh? Almost. There we go. Alright, now if I can just keep those in there on the way over to the machine. Alright. Now to try to put on a carburetor with one hand. Let's see here. It goes like that. I've got to get that governor linkage hooked back in there. Let's see if I can do that with one hand. May have to set you guys down for a second. Let's see. I'm getting better with this one-handed business. Let's see. Can you see it? Let's see if I can hook that linkage in. I almost had it. I'm going to say I would have had it. Had I not been talking and doing it with one hand. Alright, I'm going to have to set you guys to that. Wait a minute. Can you see? You can. Alright. Let's see if we can get that guy back in there. This makes it even harder when I'm looking through the camera. Trying to put something together. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Go in your home. Go home. Don't you want to go home? Oh, it's close. There it is. It's in the hole. There we go. Alright. Got it in there. Now I can let that thing rest there. And uh, grab the bolts to hold the manifold on. I'm just going to grab two of them and get them within reaching distance here. Over here on the tank, and uh, let's see. I'm gonna put one of the bolts in over here. Lean it up a little bit so it'll stay in. Let's see if I can't get another one in there. I'm gonna hold it up with my knee so I can get this other one in, and then see if I can get this guy started. a little bit I'm gonna wiggle her around and find the find the threads there we go got that one started and I'm gonna go over here and get this one started I'm not gonna bother with putting that thread locker back on there I think the uh, elasticity of that plastics gonna help those screws stay in and grab these other two for the bottom Way back in there. See if we can get it in. That one's started. Let's get this other one over here. Way back in there. see what size are those I think they might be Let's see what wrench did I have over here for those um, let's see I think they might be a 7 16 or a half inch let's go over and grab those let's see there's a 7 16 uh, well actually Let's use a socket for that guy. I think a socket and a ratchet and an extension and we'll be in business. Let's see, let's check, make sure I've got the right size. Yep. What size is that? That's a 3 8 Alright, let's go over to the box and get an extension here. Huh. 
I know I can get the bottom bottom ones with the socket. I know that's clear. There's just one top one that's uh, gonna be a turd, I believe. Uh, there it is. Oh, and it's not quite enough resistance against it to actually make the ratchet work. Let's see if I can get it threaded in far enough to make the ratchet work. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and run that one down just to where it touches down. And I'll go over it. I'll probably go ahead and tighten up the other side top bolt and crisscross them just like anything else. Almost there. I didn't check to see if my rings were still there. I don't see them on the floor anywhere, so maybe maybe I didn't lose them. All right, that one's tight. Or it's snug anyway. Can I get in there to that one? Yeah, I can. Maybe the engineers that were working on this thing actually uh, had some hands-on experience. That's rare. Yeah. It's a little bit at an angle, but it still gets a hold of the, nut, the bolt enough to get a turn on it. Well, sweet. I don't have to switch over to a wrench and spend 15 minutes turning one bolt. All right. One left. And then we'll go back around and snug them all up. Those bolts, the way they feel because of that thread lock are kind of scary. If I uh, didn't want to waste any more, more if I wanted to waste more of y'all's time, I would have grabbed a tap and ran them through there just to get that old thread locker out, but it'd be all right. Again, good enough for who it's for. All right, so I had to switch cameras once again. Had to clear some space up on the card uh, because the other camera ran out of space on the card. So I don't know where it dropped off on you, but I uh, got the uh, the throttle, or not the throttle, um, the electronic choke hooked back up, plugged in, and then uh, closed back up. And then, uh, let's see here, I got uh, where we're ready to start cranking this thing we got fuel in the tank we got the fuel pump hooked back up um just gotta hold the seat button i don't know if that actually keeps it from starting or not but i'm gonna hold it just in case and we're ready to turn the key so turn the key on hold the button let's see here we gotta wait for the fuel bowl and the carb to get filled up by the by the fuel pump, so it may take a couple cranks here. I know what I, where I went wrong. I was thinking, hey, I didn't hear the click from the fuel shutoff solenoid. And yeah, my camera kicked off on me there for a second. Still on this same one though.
All right, I'm gonna need two hands to tighten this one up. There's a little too much thread locker on it. I'll bring you back when I get them all snugged up and tight. All right, got all the manifold bolts tightened up. I've got a little breather hose on the back side of this intake here. You can see it down through there. Uh, I'm working it back in there. Let's see if I can get it. I just sucks the crankcase uh, PCV there. More for emissions than anything. A lot of stuff you have to deal with nowadays is because of emissions or the EPA. There we go, she's in there. All right, uh, we need a fuel line that goes from the carb to this fuel pump up here. It's over on the bench, I'm gonna go grab that. And I think I have enough fuel in that tank to at least fill up that fuel bowl and, and uh, get this thing, uh, get a test run in before I put this cover and all that other mess back on. So let's pop this guy back on. It's not clogged, I'll pop it back on. And then we will get the fuel pump and get it put back on there. All right. Getting the fuel line back on the fuel pump. And then we need to set the fuel pump uh, back on the uh, suction line. Oh, and that line split. Um, may have to see if we can rob another one off the other machine for now. If it's savable. I'm gonna go see what the other one looks like and bring bring you guys back once we have a solution. So the the other line on the other machine here for the fuel pump, that line actually uses crankcase pressure to pulse a diaphragm, and that's what pulls fuel from the tank and feeds the carb. And the other line on the other machine was actually completely cracked in two pieces. So just for now, until I can order uh, this tube, because it's not just a, uh, I can't just go to the parts store and get some tubing. It's a special um specially made little tube there that goes into the valve cover uh for now i just used some super glue uh i think the technical term for super glue would be cyanoacrylate um but i've got some pretty good um super glue so i just squeezed some of that into the cracks for now just so we can get some fuel pump action and test this thing out. So I'm gonna run those clamps back down on these fuel lines and crank her over and see what happens here. Almost forgot our uh, our electronic choke wires here uh, to go back into this little box. So I have to make a, a connection in this little box here and another single wire on the outside of this box. Alright, so everything's reinstalled. Um, I ended up just cutting uh, the bad part out of that uh, hose coming out of the valve cover there for the fuel pump. Just so I didn't have any leaks and we knew that the um, fuel pump was getting uh, the pulse that it needed. And I went ahead and uh, I had some fuel in the tank but I didn't uh, have the uh, filter screen. Uh, completely submerged so I went ahead and went and got some more fuel and uh, we've got about half a tank now so um, already got the battery hooked up we still are using the jumper wire for the signal to the starter solenoid um, let's see I want to go ahead and throw the filter back on there just so we're not sucking up anything that we don't want into the new, newly cleaned, uh, fresh carb. So, okay, yeah, we can hear that fuel cut off, uh, solenoid click. I don't know if you guys can hear it. 
or not, but it is clicking. So, um, actually, before I crank this thing, I'm gonna pull this out of the way and see if that auto, that electronic choke is getting any kind of signal. Ooh, it's not moving. Um, I'm gonna crank it and see what it does when I crank. Okay. I'm gonna manually move it, see if it zeroes itself. Okay, yeah, it's moving now. I don't know if you guys saw that. I'm gonna do that again. And we're looking right down in there. Yeah, so there's our choke. I assume that's going to, to choke for startup. Yeah, I'm going to crank this thing and uh, see what we get. I do have the throttle on the lowest setting. Um, so let's see what happens. Not running the greatest. All right. Seems like it ran longer than it did before the carb work. Let's crank it again. May just uh, take a moment to fill up that carb bowl. Well, that's less than desirable there. So, huh. I don't know if I want to immediately jump back into the carb. I know I'm getting sparked. The thing runs there pretty good for, for a moment before it starts stumbling and, and, and dies. Um, well, maybe I want to check fuel supply. Um, let's check the fuel line. I still don't have the clamp on it. Let's see if we get any fuel here. Oh, that's not a good sign. Let's, let's, uh, oh, there's a little bit of fuel in there. It's kind of just drizzling out, though. Let's, let's crank it. Uh, let's crank this thing and see if that fuel pumps pulsing any amount of fuel. Uh... Let's see if I can kind of set this up here where I can catch it if it if it does indeed do its job. I'm not making a big mess. So I should, I'm expecting to see a pretty good uh, pulse here. Okay, that was whatever fuel was left in the bowl there. Okay, so it looks like there might be some movement there, but there is nothing flowing out of that hose. The only movement, the only reason we're seeing anything going on there is because it's sitting on the machine and it's vibrating. There's next to nothing coming out of that hose, and it should be like a fire hydrant. Um, so we don't have any leaks in the hose going to the valve cover. Um. I don't know if maybe our our feed line from the tank is clogged or if this pump is bad. Um, actually, I know I know it's got to be the pump because we checked this line, or I checked this line when when I pulled this tank off. I pulled that line off and blew through it and made sure there was nothing blocking it. So, and and the little filter down there. Uh, I blew through it as, as well, so um, I think we have a bad fuel pump there. Luckily, we have another machine. The question is, is the is the fuel pump on the other machine any better? Um, I guess I'm gonna pull that other pump and uh, pop that on there and see if that has any better results. So uh, went out to pull that other fuel pump. And got to thinking, I didn't check the petcock on the bottom of the tank or the line between the filter and the tank. Well, the line was clear, but the petcock, on the other hand, was completely plugged. Um, and when I pulled it out, it actually damaged the rubber grommet that seals it to the bottom of the tank. So, um, that guy's going to leak quite a bit so I am gonna have to come up with a solution to that 
but at least we know now why the thing would run and then stall. Enough fuel would seep through all the all the debris in this petcock and then it would start with fuel and uh, sputter out. So, uh, not the fuel pump, the fuel petcock. Alright, so for testing purposes until I solve the fuel tank issue, I have stuck a funnel in the fuel line and uh, gonna see if we can get this thing to run and confirm that that is our problem. Obviously it, it kind of has to be our problem because we had no fuel supply. So I'm just gonna run this thing right quick just to prove out that we have it solved. Here we go. Surely it didn't run all the fuel out that quick. Let me fill this thing back up. All right, I got it filled back up. Uh, the funnel's quite full of fuel. It's probably gonna run it out pretty quickly, but here we go. So, we have found the problem. A clogged fuel petcock. Alright, so as you can see, uh, I just took the tank from over here and moved it to the other side so I could just hook it up to the same fuel line that I was using. Um, I figured um, wherever that petcock is, whatever I did with that petcock, I think it's over here on the bench. But that rubber seal around the petcock um, isn't something I can just run to the parts store and get. I could probably order one, um, but it wasn't going to get the machine up and going. And I have another parts machine uh, with tanks that I can clean up. So just for the time being, I swapped that tank over to the other side. Um, I just left the petcock in the tank so I didn't risk tearing up that rubber seal. And I just took the petcock apart and uh, flushed it out with brake clean and, and got it um, unclogged. Uh, went ahead and hooked it up to the fuel pump uh, and got all that squared away. Uh, I'm not going to um, run it this evening. It's, it's quite late. Don't want to uh, piss off the neighbors. Um, but we already confirmed that that was the problem um, with the funnel. Uh, earlier so I know it's it's good to go uh, I'm just gonna uh, continue getting all this stuff cleaned up uh, under the fan shroud before I replace that fan shroud and uh, get her all buttoned up and put back together uh, we still have to put that PTO um, um, on the crankshaft and we still need to overlay uh, that solenoid control wire still using the jumper wire so uh, we'll get all this stuff cleaned up get the fan shroud back on uh, button everything up in the rear and then we'll move up here um, that little little cubby um, that little compartment that goes under the seat I was able to remove that and get access to all the uh, 
uh, wiring underneath. So when we get ready to replace that control wire, we'll just pull a new wire from uh, the control panel over and through the chassis over to the starter solenoid. Um, and once all that's done, we'll see how she cuts some grass. All right, so it's the next morning here. And uh, not in fear of waking the neighbors, so let's uh, see if this thing will fire up and run properly. And if it does, we can button her back up and move on to that PTO pulley and belt and then uh, just getting closer to cutting some grass with this thing so here we go let's did we hear the yeah the fuel shut off solenoid is clicking so um, here we go That's closer to the idol I'm looking for. All right. I'm gonna shut this thing off. I'm gonna get that fan shroud on it before we uh, let it run much longer than that. I don't wanna cause any overheating. Um, looks like we've got a running lawnmower here. So I'm gonna get that fan shroud thrown back on and uh, we'll go ahead and overlay a new control wire to the solenoid from the key and get all the control panel buttoned back up and we'll get this uh, well before we before we uh, jack it up and put that PTO back in there or the new PTO in there um, I want to make sure that the uh, hydrostatic drives are working properly so I may get that shroud put back on and then um, make sure she wants to move and operate properly before we keep going. So, all right, I think our fan shroud's about dried off. A little bit of water left on it. Nothing that won't dry once I set it on the machine. Let's see, gotta pull that air filter back off there for a moment so we can get this guy set down on there let's see goes down over the metal here there we go I think this little air intake has to pop in let's see there we go gotta help it along there There we go. Now let's grab our screws for the finisher out here. So those little 
guys with the collar on them. Two, three, four, five, six, I believe it was. We'll get around here and throw all these guys back in. Let's get them all started there. And I'll come back with the impact and run them all tight. One back here. Oh, needs to lift up a little bit. There we go. There we go. See, where else do we have some? One right here. One right there. There we go. We've got one more right behind our little fuel management electronic box there. I'll go ahead and run that all the way down. I know it was difficult to get to with the, uh, the socket. Alright. Alright. Let's, let's run these all down. I don't know if I can get to that guy or not. Might come back around with a ratchet and snug those up. socket off the impact and grab us a ratchet. And you guys don't let me forget about the screws that go down in that air box. Let's see. Let's snug these up. Don't want stuff rattling around. That one's tight. Snug that one up, it's tight. Got one more. Ah, gonna have to grab an extension for that one. Alright, now we got two screws down in here. I believe they were the flathead screws. Are these it. No, oh, maybe they weren't the flathead. Or maybe they were. Here we go. Put those in their place and I'll grab a flathead and run them down here. Alright, so there's more to this um, starter signal wire than just jumping straight from the key to the solenoid. Um, I didn't really think about it. Um, the reason the jumper wire was working is because we were just bypassing all the other switches um, that are between the key and the solenoid. Uh, on most machines, the park brake switches are in series uh, between the key and the starter solenoid. The the seat switch there may be in series between the key and the solenoid. Um, so there's much more than just a possible open in the wire. Uh, one of these switches, uh, the the deck PTO switch there is in series between the key and the solenoid. So it could be any one of these switches um, that inhibits starting. So we've got to go through and the way I'm going to go about it is I'm going to bypass each switch where that green wire comes goes into the switch and then back out. I'm just going to bypass with a jumper 
and then try it with the key. Um, if it is a switch and we bypass it, the thing will crank and we'll know uh, which switch it is. Um, there is a park brake switch on that control lever as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off this panel over on the other side so I can get to that park brake switch. Uh, I don't know if the throttle control may have some kind of um, sensor on it or switch on it. So I'm going to open up this panel just so we can get a better look. We can get to everything that crosses between the two panels through this hole where this cubby goes. So let's get that, that control panel off. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Uh, there is an adjustment here on the control arm that is to used to adjust uh, pushing this switch down down here, and it's only pushing it about halfway. So I wonder if I wonder if we can adjust that and get that switch to depress all the way. Uh, can I get this lever out of the way anymore? Nope. Well, I pulled it up a little bit further out of the way. There we go. Now you can see that switch down here. And you can see I've got, I've got this arm pulled all the way out. And we still don't have that switch pushed all the way down. Let's see if I can get in there with a screwdriver and show you guys. Yeah, see? We have quite a bit more travel to that switch there. Let's uh, I'm gonna try to get you guys uh, where you can see here. I'm going to hold that down and just see if that might be our issue. Make sure all the other safeties are depressed. Let's, let's hold this seat switch. Let's see if she'll crank. Ah! It is that switch. Let's confirm that. I'm going to let off that switch and see if it will still crank. Oh, it still cranks. So we moved something around uh, when we pulled this panel up and uh, made that starter circuit work. Let's see if we can't move around some wires and maybe get it to not work again. She still wants to crank. Hmm. Okay, so obviously it's a intermittent here. Let's see if that button is being pressed enough. I'm going to fold that back up where that button's not being depressed at all. Yeah. So maybe that switch wasn't being pressed enough, but when I push that all the way out it gets just enough contact that appears to be the case hmm oh. let's see here how do we go about this um let's let's adjust this little guy out down here make sure that switch is being pushed as much as it can be and uh I know it's it's the it's the first Monday of the month. That's why the sirens going off. They're testing it, guys. Yeah, All right, so it's working. Um, I'm gonna turn you guys off for a moment and regroup, see what the kids want, and uh, we'll get back out here on this and see if we can't get this to malfunction again, so we can find the problem. So we're gonna just that adjustment screw there to see if we can't get that arm to push that park switch down further because I think that's our issue so I'm gonna grab a wrench break that nut loose and run that down and see how far we can uh, push down that button see if that solves the issue alright so I got all the adjustment I can out of out of the adjuster screw here um, 
but we can actually move the sensor uh, and kind of change the angle of the sensor to get it uh, where it wants to push the button in further so there's screws here on the outside that hold that sensor in I'm going to loosen those up and let's see here let's get the pressure off of it and I think if we lean it back that brings the button up closer and we can get that button pressed down further so I'm going to tighten those screws up and then we'll come back and check how far that button's being pressed all right so I got the linkage readjusted and actually moved the switch itself and now we're getting uh, full engagement of that of that uh, switch and I've went and cranked it quite a few times and it seems like that's what our issue was so uh, I'm gonna button back up these control panels and get to working on swapping out that PTO uh, pulley down below Get the ignition switch put back into the panel and do the same thing on this side. All right, so um, because this pulley will make the engine turn, uh, we have to use an impact gun to get that the uh, bolt that holds the pulley on, and they actually give you a little access hole through the bottom of the chassis to get to it. So. I've got my air impact gun here. Uh, I don't use the air impact often because my compressor just uh, will only support it for a, a few short seconds. So, but I'm hoping I have enough power here to to get this off. Here we go. There we go. It fell right off. All right. I was worried that I was going to have to use a pry bar or a puller to get that pulley off and uh, that was not the case. She just came right off. Awesome. So I'm going to get that one out of there, uh, clean up all this junk out of the bottom of it and throw the other uh, pulley on. So like I had mentioned earlier, um, the PTO clutch on the machine we're working on um, was damaged. The previous owner told me about that. They actually somehow, the PTO um, came loose and was able to spin and it pulled the wires out. So luckily he had a parts machine that he gave me with the machine we're working on. So I went ahead and pulled this PTO off the parts machine. Um, as you can see, it's still pretty rusty. Um, I did a little bit of cleanup and got the heavy rust off of it. Uh, before I go any further though, um, I want to check and make sure... Um, the mag the electromagnet actually works so again just like uh, the machine I've got uh, a good battery here with some jumper cables on it and I just took and connected some smaller ju jumper wires to the jumper cables I've got the negative already hooked up uh, making contact with the with the metal pin inside the connector it's not polarity sensitive so I didn't have to worry about uh, where positive and negative go, it doesn't matter. Um, so if this thing is all good, I should be able to touch this this positive here and I should hear this electromagnet uh, kick on. So uh, let me see if I can do this one-handed here and get you in the frame. Let's see. It does work. That's not a guarantee that it works. It could still be weak and not be able to spin the blades, but that's a good sign. It sounds like 
that magnet's pulling it, pulling it uh, pretty good. So I'm gonna move forward with this this uh, PTO and put it on the machine and see if we uh, when we get the engine running if we can't get the deck uh, to function. Alright, I got the new pulley ready to go. Um, so I'm gonna set that up in there. The shaft looks pretty clean, so I'm gonna check, make sure the key is still there and it's not. Oh, the key is built in to the hub of this PTO. So uh, the only other thing I have to worry about is getting this spacer ring in there before I put the, 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 the clutch in there. So I'm gonna get, up, get that up in there. Um, and get the bolt started. I might have to do that off camera, so I need both hands. So I'll bring you guys back once I got the bolt started, and uh, we'll run it up in there with an impact. I may put a little bit of blue Loctite on there as well. All right. So if any of you guys ever have to put one of these PTOs on, um, one thing to note: here's the the uh, piece that it holds the the PTO from spinning, and the keyway on the on the crankshaft uh, has to line up as well and you cannot see it because it's on the back side because the keyway is built into the pulley so you kinda gotta guesstimate where to put the crankshaft so it'll line up when you slide this PTO up there uh, I already have the bolt up in there with some blue Loctite um, I was pretty generous with the blue Loctite I do not want that thing coming off again it's not a cheap part to purchase Luckily, I did have the parts machine, so uh, I'm going to get the impact up in there and crank it down. And then, uh, next up is the belt. And we're that much closer to getting this thing operational. Oops. Get our socket in there. Let's reverse the gun. I don't want to take the bolt back out. All right, I am on there. May need to run the compressor again and get my air back up. All right. So. Only thing left is a belt. Plug in our electrical connector here and uh, give her a test run. Uh, I do see a pulley up in there. It's one of the idler pulleys for the deck belt. Looks like it might be tweaked just a little bit, so I may have to get up under there once I go to put the belt on and bend that bracket slightly that holds that idler so that our belt tracks straight. I'm hoping this pulley, the rust in this pulley, will clean up. I did uh, wire brush a lot of it out of there, all the loose stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Let's get this wire plugged back in. Uh, I am going to run the compressor again and make sure I've got that bolt good and tight. Like I said, I do not want that thing coming off there. If it comes off there, not only will it rip, it, rip the wires out, uh, it could potentially become a projectile across the yard, and I do not want that. I don't want to kill my neighbor, so... Let's see. I'm getting better at the one-handed stuff here, guys. Let's see if I can plug this in with one hand. Actually, it looks like the... Oh, I was trying to plug it in backwards. Uh, pretend you didn't see that. Always goes a lot better when you're trying to plug it in the right way. There we go. Uh, push it together and make sure that that lock catches so we don't come unplugged. All right. It's on there. <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna go grab the belt, see if I can't figure out um, how this belt goes on, and I'll bring you guys back for a test run. See if we have some spinning blades underneath this thing. All right, so I got the belt on, I got the PTO clutch. Um, 
installed, uh, the bolt lock tied it in there. So we're gonna give this deck uh, a test and see what she does. So, oh, what's going on here? works and uh, I guess I got the belt on there correct um, I didn't have a diagram to go by I assume the covers for the deck uh, can you be quiet Jaden yeah. we're talking to everybody on the camera the the covers for the pulleys on the deck uh, must have had the diagram for the belt routing uh, I, I ended up figuring it out obviously it was, it's working so I think we're in good shape now uh, if my loyal cameraman will show me the show you guys the tire down here um, that's the only tire I have to address any issues with, so I think I'm going to try the ratchet strap trick. If you guys haven't heard of that, we put a ratchet strap around the outside diameter of the tire and tighten it up, and that helps the bead of the tire uh, seat against the rim so you can get some air in it. So we're going to try that. If we're able to get some air in that tire, we're going to head out into the lawn and see how this puppy handles. So. Um, Bear with me here and we're going to get some air in that tire and give her a test run. Yard's done in about, oh, 20 minutes. I think this is going to be the last time I mow for the season. It's getting quite cold. I think it's probably in the 50s this morning. And I can start putting some fresh paint on this thing and, and going through it and checking all the fluids, sharpening the blades, making sure all the tires are going to hold air, and just getting it ready for next season. I'll probably change the belts. I already got that other belt ordered and on the way. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but I think this is the last the last one for the season. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I uh, hope you learned something. Uh, we did a little bit of electrical, a little bit of engine work, a little bit of everything. So stick around, like, and subscribe if you haven't. Um, keep a lookout. I'm trying to get videos out on a weekly basis not sure what day that would be but um, hopefully I can get a little more consistent with that and keep you guys uh, coming around so uh, enjoy the rest of your week and hope to see you next week